1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Our Chaplain's Report today actually comes from the book of Acts. And Laura, I know that you're very familiar with this as well. There are so many phrases and so many things that we draw from the Bible, it's literally impossible to calculate its influence on the English language. Entirely true. And there are certain phrases that get used, especially around this time of year, that people probably don't even realize are biblical in nature. Hmm, like comfort and joy. Right. Another one that I was thinking of, and this is going to be the the really kind of the meat and potatoes of our topic today, uh, it's better to give than to receive. A lot of people don't realize that's a Bible verse. Oh, yeah, that's true. And I know I didn't realize it until I think I was a teenager. I felt, felt thought it was just like a random proverb that I heard all the time. I didn't realize it was actually from the Bible. Hmm. So here's the thing, though, and I think that you would probably agree with this, too. How many times do people know like a little snippet of something that's in the Bible, but they don't really understand the context? And because of that, they don't really get the full effect. Uh, Like all the time, mostly like, you know, the whole do not judge thing. Right. I mean, that's a good example. Like if you understand the context surrounding it, you understand that the way that people usually characterize it is the exact opposite of what it's saying. Yeah, all the time. But this is one in particular that I think context really helps us. So to understand the context of this verse that comes from uh, Acts chapter 20, Paul is leaving Ephesus and he's sort of giving his sign off speech. He's saying goodbye to everybody. And uh, it's very emotional. This is a congregation that Paul has really sort of fostered from the very beginning up until now. And he's visited several times, written them a couple of letters. They're very close with Paul. And so they're giving this very sort of tear jerking goodbye speech before he departs from them. And here's what's really important. Paul knows he's not coming back. I mean, this is kind of the the scene, to to set it up, it's kind of like one of those movie scenes where the hero's about to walk away and he knows he's not coming back because he's just not going to be able to. He's going to either sacrifice himself or something. That's what we're seeing out of Paul right now. And because of his prophetic abilities, he knows that's what's happening. He actually says that, I'm about to suffer persecution. I'm going to go through imprisonment. And so he knows it's not that he doesn't want to come back or he doesn't want to be with the Ephesians. He knows he's never going to see him again. And he says that. And so that really sets the scene to help you understand why this verse is so significant because he's about to undergo a very severe persecution that separates him from the people that he cares about at Ephesus. And this is the last time he's ever going to get to see them. So this verse comes from Acts chapter 20. Uh, Verses 34 and 35. You yourselves know that these hands ministered to my own needs and to the men who were with me. In everything, I showed you that by working hard in this manner, you must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, that he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And how many times do you hear that phrase uttered. How many times do you hear people say that around the holidays? No, all the time. Right. They, it's better to give than receive. And and that's fine. It's a good thing to say. It's appropriate for this time of year where we're supposed to be more focused on the giving of gifts than we are what we're going to get out of it. It's a very good thing. Yeah. But when you put it in that light, it takes on a whole different life because you understand that the reason that Paul is telling them that is not because he's wanting them to experience the joy of giving or whatever, which is, of course, part of it, but primarily he's saying, there are people that are sick and weak and in need, and I need to know that they're going to be okay because you're going to take care of them because I'm not going to be able to do it anymore. That's a really powerful message from the Apostle Paul. Absolutely. And when you understand it from that light, I think... What really hits home for us is that we all know that someday we're going to pass from this world, and there are going to be people that probably depended on us. Now, 
you may live the kind of life where nobody depends on you and you don't help people, and that would, of course, be a tragic existence. Scrooge. Right. But primarily, what we're looking at is somebody like Paul that spent his life serving people, taking care of people. And if you want to look at somebody that is modeling Christ in their life and really sort of taking home, and this is his own words uh, from the book of Colossians, having the mind of Christ in you, I think this verse really encapsulates that. Because what did Jesus say while he was on the cross? Take care of my mother. Right. Exactly. When he's sitting there on the cross, a time where nobody would blame him for thinking about himself. Mm -hmm. He's worried about the apostles, and he's worried about his mom. So he's constantly worried about other people, even when he's in peril and he's about to go through something. And I think to really encapsulate that, that spirit of that phrase that we use all the time, it's better to give than to receive. We need to remember that the reason that that saying was uttered in the scripture was because Paul was taking care of people that needed him. And he was modeling Christ in his life because of that. And I think if we keep that in mind, then that idea of giving and receiving, it's not just about Christmas presents. That's a great thing. And, and I enjoy getting presents for people myself, usually donations for the human fund. Yeah, yeah. But, but ultimately... What I think is important to remember here is we need to live a life where we take care of those that are less fortunate, and when we give of ourselves, we give on a daily basis to those that need it, not just presents to people that, that we want to you know shower with blessings, and that's a good thing, but that's really where that phrase comes from. And I think that if we keep that in mind and we do that throughout our lives, that's going to be the kind of life that Christ is going to be proud of. And that's how you spread Christmas cheer all year. There you go. It sounds like a Christmas special, but it really is. Well, thank you so much for being with us, Laura. We appreciate yeah. you being with us for the uh, the Christmas special. Laura Clark, everybody. Hey. <laughs> Thanks for being with us. Uh, we will see you after New Year's. Stay the course, friends. You know, you really should like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. Oh, what's that? You want to know what's on the channel before you subscribe to it? Oh, no, 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 it's like Obamacare. So you gotta subscribe to find out what's on it.